Hello there, my friends. Chris Mark is here with you for Arcadia Economics. And today, you're going to dig into whether gold and silver are speculative bubbles like I'm sure you'll be hearing about plenty in the media, especially in the mainstream media. And look there with palladium. The 2251 gold at 1952. Let's take a quick look at the chart before we dig in today. I mean, given the rest of the week, this was a pretty much uh, uneventful day. You can see, uh, I, mean, I guess now we have $30 swings in both direction. In the gold market is uneventful. But closing up at around, let's call it 1948 and a half on the kit code chart. Silver, a similar story, uh, floating around the 27, 2750 level. Again, nothing too wild. We didn't have any, any volume spoofs today. So that is always good. And uh, on a somewhat quiet day, let us dig in. Uh, is silver and gold a speculative bubble? And the great Craig Hemke, uh, who we've had on the show quite a bunch of times, uh, digs into it and looks at some conclusions from the Commitment of Traders report. Although with a disclaimer, I love how he points out here, in the past, JP Morgan and other bullion banks have been repeatedly fined for deliberately submitting false information for these reports. We also found out last night that in that confession from uh, Bank of Nova Scotia, that they were fined an additional amount because they lied. So as is the case with most things in the gold and silver markets, <clears throat> As Craig quite wisely points out here, take this information, I would say almost any gold and silver data with a few small or maybe a handful of grains of salt. Because um, he talks about how market strategists expect, spec, expect speculative trading in gold to continue. Um, and I'll leave this up here. If you want to go through the whole article, you can. And he has some good points in there, although... I don't know, in the end, does it matter whether it's speculative? Uh, I mean, I suppose any time in the way markets are set up today on Wall Street that um, when a market is moving, <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of leverage, a lot of speculation on both sides. And as I've detailed in the book, The Big Silver Short and Night After Night on the show, as you know, I think that the majority of that has left gold and silver highly undervalued. So yeah, and especially, I mean, when you have the banks duking it out, just launching paper contracts at will, um, you'll see stuff like what we saw where silver went from 18 to 29 and to 24, then now it's bouncing around $27. Um, I guess the best uh, perhaps suggestion, or at least what I try and keep in mind is that that's to be expected. And you know, again, just becoming used. I've gotten a lot of the emails and I know people get concerned under these things that are down. Someone actually asked if I meditate because I seem calm about it. Um, the answer is yes, actually. And that was part of getting to the point to be able to be calm about it, uh, which I think is really, I mean, gee, if there's any uh, skill in life, if we can respond to things calmly rather than getting swept away by the emotions. And certainly you don't want to find yourself in one of those days where silver is down four or five dollars and you're panicked because of that move and are making decisions, as they say in the poker world, on tilt or when you're frustrated or letting your temper get the best of you. So, which isn't for me to tell you whether to buy or sell in any of these situations. Again, I shared that I'm Primarily just watching the ride, trying to do as little as possible. Um, but I find if you have a plan in place uh, beforehand, which for me is trying to stay out of the way, um, then, you know, yeah. Now, is, is gold and silver a speculative bubble? I think the prices are going to be driven higher for some very simple fundamental reasons. And, you know, we've talked about the money printing. We've talked about the leverage. Um, now the bullion banks, you know, the signs it kind of slowly in some ways where they're, you hear them talking about exiting the positions, uh, Bank of Nova Scotia paid to get out of their book before getting fined. Um, 
seen some evidence in the COT reports that the shorts are slowly, yet it also in that COD report as mentioned last night, still does show the four largest traders in the silver market short 248 uh, million ounces. So the speculative bubble, I mean, to me, I don't see gold and silver as a bubble. I see the stock market as a bubble. I see the bond market. I mean, think about that. The world's reserve currency offers a 0.6 or 7% yield while the Fed is running a hyperinflation campaign and insists that it's going to get to 2% inflation. Uh, I would suggest that if they were even remotely closely calibrating a rate of price increase, they would see it's well past that. Because keep in mind, you can still have prices going up. I mean, just because the, uh, I mean, again, now the S&P, I guess, is in record territory again. But even in the case where the market goes down a bit, you could say that it would have gone down more were it not for the inflation, again, the Austrians defining inflation, as when the money supply or supply of credit is increased and the increase in price being the offsetting effect of that. Um, actually digging through Von Mises, The Theory of Money and Credit, which I believe was his uh, masterpiece. So thinking about these things lately. And I do have a couple book recommendations before we wrap up tonight, because several people have asked about that. So again, Sprott Money, uh, all the things Craig writes are great on there. Um, I guess I didn't really answer the question. Is it, is it a speculative bubble? No, I don't think it's a bubble. I think it's being driven by demand. I think you will see speculation on both sides. And again, whatever your view is, perhaps just Having that in place a little bit, I saw some Warren Buffett quote somewhere where uh, it was something about the idiot and the not planning. Uh, you can be, you can come out ahead if you, even if you're an idiot, but you have a remotely cogent plan. Um, so I imagine there's going to be some wild swings in both directions. Um, you know, if somebody really gives you a good case that gold and silver are going lower. I'd ask what that's based on. Um, yeah, there's going to be the Wall Street trading, but if you're taking a step back, looking at this from a bigger term per perspective, which I think it's a darn exciting time, whether you have millions of dollars or whether you're just starting out. I mean, you know what the Fed is going to do. You know that part of the outcome the, of the election. So I don't know. I've thought about it before. Even when silver is you know, 50 bucks or higher than that, I mean, maybe there's some point at which I'm not rushing to pile in, but I don't know. Do you save cash when even regardless of the gold or silver price, it's being devalued? So anyway, just some of the questions that I think about, I find the more I think about how I feel about those, easier a lot of the other decisions become. Although, if you need help with any of those, we got you covered because Silverfest is coming. That's right on the Arcadia Economics homepage. Uh, let's see if I can figure out how to display. There's day one of the schedule and there's the uh, button to click to register. Let's try clicking out. Well, oh, there we go. You get that little arrow and you can see the whole schedule where we'll be digging into a lot of the questions like this, obviously the technical stuff as well. Um, but you can see David Morgan, Jeff Clark is going to be there. Uh, well, I guess I'll have to get this updated with a new copy of the schedule. Although, let's pull back up some of the things that we will be covering. Did have Ronan Manley confirm from Bullion Star. So while Craig Hemke is unfortunately not there, I'll have that updated, but Ronan Manley will be joining us. Ted Butler, Andrew McGuire, Andy Sheckman, going to be taking some questions on one of these nights. Um, so again, you can now register on the homepage of Arcadia Economics for Silverfest coming up September 11th through 13th. We have movie night in there too. So Friday night's just hanging out. Uh, you can meet other silver investors, uh, make some friends, and we'll be watching Trading Places. So uh, again, you can sign up 
and it's free for people to attend. So that is good news. Quick look at the silver stocks today. You can see aside from Alexco there, uh, pretty good day for most of the miners. There is Silvercrest up about a dime, Mag Silver. So no big moves. First Majestic uh, th up 37 cents. Uh, come on, uh, First Majestic before August expiration. Coming in a couple of days, does not look like my options are going to hit there. Um, which again, if anyone is out there trading, uh, some of the minor call options in this rally, obviously a variety of different ways you go, you can go, um, at least for what I've described on some of those option calls before being comfortable, I don't know, being able to pick educated spots. Um, okay. If they don't hit, but structuring things in a way that, you know, you can reload and, that way, uh, if you hit even three or four times out of 10, you don't necessarily need five or more, can come out ahead. And I will keep you posted on how that goes. Again, so far, I haven't had too much success in these last couple of weeks because I've been using primarily the mining stocks, which while they've gone up, not enough to match the high volatility premium that uh, some of these are being priced at which is one of the things to keep in mind. And again, we will do more option calls. There will be an option segment at Silverfest. So keep that in mind. And a couple of people have asked for some book recommendations. And so I just thought since today we didn't have too much news, a few that I love, here's the new, the, the market wizards and the new market wizards, uh, both by Jack Schwager. So there's actually a whole series of the Market Wizards books, uh, Tech Market Wizards, Hedge Fund Market Wizards. I'm partial to uh, the original Market Wizards because that's what I used to read while I would take the Chinatown bus from Morton's MBA program to uh, my trading interviews in New York. Interestingly enough, I actually did interview with JP Morgan back in, gee, I guess that, would have been 2004. Fortunately, I did not get an offer from them at the time, uh, but interesting little footnote. But these were great books because what he does is he interviews really successful traders, uh, Stanley Druckenmiller, um, Jim Rogers, I don't think was in there, but a whole bunch of traders from different perspectives, different styles, and you can see, in fact, it was interesting. There was one with a psychologist who points out that it's not really that any uh, particular style is right or not, but just that you see how each person has a style that fits them. And really, if you have something that you feel comfortable with right there, uh, great starting point. And if we take a look at the new market wizards, that was one I also have a fondness for because Jeff Yass, who started Susquehanna trading shop that I used to work for, is one of the people interviewed in the New Market Wizards. And uh, I have the audiobook, which is actually pretty great. And a lot of, and I, I'll tell you what, just listen to one of those chapters every once in a while. I listen on double speed myself. Um, that will help you. That will make you money on the coming rally that, or the rally that's already begun, however you want to phrase it. Uh, I've found myself going for walks, listening to these. And it's, it's cool because you find the underlying advice and they're all saying generally the same thing. You can adapt it to your personality. Um, you get a bunch of different views. And actually, this is what sparked the format for the big silver short which initially was going to be called the Silver Market Wizards, although uh, Jack asked that I did not do that. So um, anyway, any of those Jack Swagger Market Wizards books uh, for folks who have been looking for some recommendations. Also, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator. I've been listing the audio version of this one. I actually got the audio version and the print version. So I think we'll have to give away that print version sometime soon, maybe at Silverfest, if not before, but um, 
it's funny, the one story that stands out so far is that the narrator is talking with this guy who's described as being a bit older and, you know, all the young guys would come and say, you know, you got to do this stock or you have to sell here and get out and buy it back lower. He just kind of chuckles and says, but we are in a bull market. And I think there's something to be said for that. Just remembering that if you can identify a bull market and stay out of the way of it, then usually good things can happen. I think that's uh, what we're experiencing here. So again, this has been a fun audiobook to listen to. And let's see, well, this, wow. Well, if you type in the big silver short, you can actually buy shorts, um, get a sponsored ad from Proper Men's Uniform Polo Shirt. Looks a little gray. I wonder if they have other colors. Although then look, they're the big silver short. How the Wall Street banks have left the silver market in place for the short squeeze of a lifetime. Um, I know a lot of you out there have it. I think we finally got all the pre-orders out there. Sorry, those took a while. Lesson learned from the first book is available in audio version as well which you can find on the home site of arcade economics big banner right there and lastly before wrapping up just want to let you know you can also get these videos delivered directly to your inbox if that's easier for you right in this little section here get arcade updates by email cleverly titled as you can see um but yeah if you want to be stay uh, posted anytime one of these videos comes out um, just put your name and email there. We'll send them your way. And with that said, going to wrap up for today. Hope you're having a beautiful night out there. I'm getting ready to get a call from Denver Dave Kranzler and Andy Sheckman to keep you covered this weekend. So again, thanks for being here. Really looking forward to interacting with a lot of you at Silverfest. Um, and I would say more fun than conference. Um, was a big thing that I got all these guys who are signed up to appear to agree to. Um, so really, yeah, we'll be talking about silver. And I do think you will get world-class information about the silver market that you cannot find elsewhere in one location like that. Um, but more importantly, uh, you know, you're going to meet some fun people. A lot of really good people that are coming. Uh, we're going to be giving away silver giving away copies of the big silver short. And again, you can sign up for that right here on the homepage. So with that said, thank you all for being here tonight and I will see you again tomorrow.